Hey everybody, Dave again, and I've got another exciting video. This time I'm hoping to save you a lot of time and energy and frustration because I've gone through all of this and I want to try to save you guys from not having to feel the same way or experience the same thing. So there's a lot of craziness going on. Um, here's the, the setup for the video and to kind of let you know what's going on, why I made it, the problem we're trying to solve. And the problem is, is that you've got a power app based on a SharePoint list or maybe multiple SharePoint lists, and you need to move it from, say, one environment to another. The situation could be you're in application lifecycle management known as ALM, and you're trying to get it out of dev and you're going to move it into QA or prod or whatever. The point is you just you got to move it. And you want to align the environment in Power Platform with, say, a SharePoint system or a SharePoint list specifically carved out and dedicated to that environment. Um, another situation is maybe you're going to move it to a customer or a client. Um, you know, I don't know, whatever the situation is. But the point is you got to move it from, from point A to point B. So here is the power uh, platform lab that I have here. This is actually SharePoint, and I want to show you some lists. And so um, I, I'm not too worried about showing you an app per se, but we're simply just dealing with the SharePoint list problem of how do we get it and move it around. So here's a couple things. If I go to new and I go to list, okay, I can start from a blank list, but I can also choose from an existing list, which means I can clone that list. So that means any list that I have in this particular environment, I can clone it, right? And I can move it over and it, it, it's life is good. Uh, let's just say here's the accounts list that I have and I can rename it and call it something new and boom, that'll come over. Now, it doesn't necessarily bring over any data, but you at least get the schema and you can repopulate it with whatever you want, right? So this is okay for dev, prod, and QA. And honestly, a lot of you guys are doing this. You're using a single SharePoint site and you're just carving out multiple lists to pair up. And so this is like the best case. But it doesn't solve the problem when you're trying to move it to a customer or a client's location or a completely different SharePoint site. That introduces a whole plethora of problems. And this is the problem that we're trying to solve in this video. Okay, so let's go to content and let's go back to that accounts list. And here we go. Here's the account list, right? So we'll bring this up. Here's a thousand rows that we have in this list. All right, now if we come over here to this gear, we come over here to list settings. One of the things that we can do under permission and management is we can save this list as a template. Okay, I'm gonna pause right here because this is the first problem you're gonna run into. Not for all of you, but for some of you. And some of you are not even gonna see this option at all. Zero, it's been shut down. So this is the SharePoint modern experience and they've done a bunch of stuff. It's very much similar to those of you that are watching this video that had come from and know Microsoft Dynamics 365. Over the years since 2016, they've slowly migrated more and more and more away from the traditional um, back end of Dynamics 365 and moved the Power Platform into this new experience, but they, have left a bunch of stuff still, even in this, uh, as of the date of this recording in 2023, the majority of it's been moved over, but there's still nuanced settings that you have to go back into that old legacy environment for. And this is the same thing here. So in order to solve this problem, to get save list as template to even show up for you, if you're one of those people that can't see this, you're gonna have to go over to the admin center. And there's a problem with even doing it this way. I'm gonna show you the layers and layers of problems you're gonna have. So first, once you get into the backend admin center, this is her, her, yeah, first hurdle number one. You're gonna to have to have administrative permissions within your Office 365 tenant to be able to, even to be able to get into the backend. And assuming you do have that, you're still gonna have more kinds of issues or, or additional issues rather. Boy, I'm really not forming sentences today. <laughs> so the next thing is what we wanna do is go into the SharePoint administrative backend, okay? So now we're several layers deep into this crazy onion and the settings that we need to toggle are over here in settings. All right, remember that new experience versus that old legacy experience? Well, here it is. 
The settings that we need to get to are not available in any of the settings that are here on this new experience. You have to go into the classic settings. So now you're like now four layers deep into this onion. The settings that you need to change are down here under custom script. You need to have um, this setting set to allow and this setting set to allow. So these two settings have to be set to allow. And once you do that, you have to click OK. So again, all the problems to get here. Now here's the next problem. When you make the setting changes here, it can take up to 24 hours to see this effective in the SharePoint Administrative Backend Center so you can see this link, okay? So that being said, I'm gonna show you another way. I know a lot of you are gonna cringe. And the way to have this thing be fixed pretty quick is you're gonna to need to run this script, okay? So I'm gonna put a script, this script in the description of the video so that you can copy and paste it. I want you to understand that if you run this as it is, uh, you're gonna to have to switch out some stuff. So the admin center URL, you need to switch it out so that it looks, you know, it needs to look like this, but for your environment, the key is gonna be this forward uh, piece of the URL here. This is gonna change out. Also here, uh, it's gonna change, and this has to do with the site. Okay, so you, you want to enable this on a particular site. Okay, so you need to make sure that that's there. And so just, again, swap out these two variables to match what you've got on your end, and then run it, and life should be good. If it's not, and here's yet another problem, maybe you don't have the SharePoint management uh, shell installed for PowerShell. And if that's the case, then I need you to uncomment this and run this and then run it again. And then you should get the uh, commands that'll work. Um, basically, you'll know that it's bad. It'll tell you something about the connect SPO service is not recognized, blah, 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 blah. I, I truncated the rest of that off. So if you do get this error, make sure you uncomment this line right here and run that. All right. This should make it show up relatively within five to 10 minutes, okay? So this is much faster than this layered upon layers upon layers deep into the onion just to flip and toggle these switches and then up to 24 hours, okay? So I gave you both the graphical version and also I'll give you the PowerShell script to run it. All of that just to get to this point, okay? So all of these hurdles, it's this, it should not be this difficult, guys. I don't know why Microsoft makes this so, so difficult at times. This is this is a common theme where people wanna move stuff around, right? And to be able to give them this ability, I just don't know why it's so hard. All right, anyway, so now I wanna save this list as a template. Finally, I can come over here and give this a name. I'm just gonna call this video template and we'll copy it out like this and we'll put video template for the name but we'll put some pretty spaces in it all right do not do not do not go too fast through this setting right now is the only chance you're going to have to make this decision if you screw it up you're going to have to go and redo this whole thing again there's a little innocent or innocuous check box and if you don't read it you're going to have a little bit more pain that's going to be self-inflicted if you want to bring in this example that I have, if I want to bring all 1000 rows over with me, I need to put a tick in the tick box to bring the data along for the ride. Otherwise, I'm simply just going to get a template that'll create an empty schema, meaning an empty list, and then I have to populate it. So you need to decide which decision is right for you. Do you want to bring the data? Yes, check it. If you don't want to bring it, don't check it, okay? I'm not going to bring it over for right now. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do it just for the sake of doing it. All right, so I'm going to click that here. And now I hit OK. And you can see up here in the top, it's spinning. It says it's completed successfully. And now I can go to this list template gallery. All right? So I have my list template gallery. And life is good. And you'd think you would be able to highlight it. And now you got this old legacy interface here, right? So a couple things, you might wanna download a copy right now because if you're going to go to a client's location, so let me download this copy, all right, so that's down. And then I'm gonna delete this. So in this scenario, let's, let's shut this completely down and I'm gonna shut this down, I'm gonna shut this down and this and this. 
and we'll just go back to SharePoint and go back into here. All right, so now I'm back at my SharePoint list. So now what I wanna to try to do is to create, um, actually I deleted that list. So I need to get back to that, that template list library and we're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna click on this cog here and what we wanna do is we wanna to go to site contents. Once we go into site contents, we want to come over here to site settings. And now from here, we can come over to list templates. Now, if you don't see list templates, that big ramble that I did before about showing you about the layers in the back end graphical thing and then the PowerShell script, if you don't see that there, you got to run this because this also comes along for the ride. You, you will not see list templates unless you've run that and this is all set up um, and you toggle that boolean setting to allow those scripts to be run all right so i'm going to go to list templates and now i don't have anything here so click on this file thing and i want to upload a document so i'm going to choose a file and i'm going to upload this video template here okay so i've done that and now i'm uploading it and so what i'm doing right now is i'm emulating let me click save and I'm emulating that I was in my development environment and now I'm in, I don't know, another tenant, a client, uh, whatever, just some other place, another SharePoint site even, okay? And so now I've got this list template. Great, now you think we would click here and somewhere in all of these options, it would be create a new list from this template. No, it's never that simple. Okay, now we gotta go through 12 more layers of the onion, so let's, come back over here let's start at the beginning again because I don't know let's even the same let's just use the same site okay and so I want to create a new library uh, now again you wouldn't do this because if you wanted to do it from if you're in the same site and you wanted to just create a new library from an existing list you don't have to do any of this craziness but I need you to use the assumption you're on the client site you're on a different SharePoint site whatever and you've imported that template so how or what do you do now all right at this point we've got to come over here and we have to click on this is so unintuitive you have to click on add an application and we've got this similar or same old problem or same old same old problem again where we need to go and we need to try to find the um, SharePoint list from that uh, templated library that that we did here the problem is once again there's the new way of doing it and the old way and the old way has settings in it that they also didn't pre you see the reoccurring theme here they prematurely release these new interfaces and don't bring everything over and it takes them forever and five days to bring it up so you're constantly having to go back so if you can't find something especially in SharePoint make sure you always look for the classic or legacy you know way of doing it because you're going to have to switch over to the classic all right now that you're finally here you see this thing down here video template and the other unintuitive part is is we're adding an application we're not adding a list from a list why is a list an application anyway so now we're going to go ahead and click on the video as this uh, source and now i can create a new list so we'll call this um, my video list demo okay there we go so my video list demo is coming through and I think I ticked the tick box so it's going to take a while because not only is it creating is it spinning actually I don't see anything happening something's weird oh it is spinning all right anyway uh, let's see here name description that you want to appear in a heading of the, throughout the site Con site contents new I think I prematurely clicked on something Anyway, let me click off of this. I need to check my list now for this SharePoint site. And let's go into here. Let's go into content. I think I call it my new something or other. My, here it is, my video list. And I have 1,000 rows. Okay, yep, I went happy clicking. I was looking at the wrong tab and I should have saw in this little uh, favicon that's here in the tab that it was spinning, that it actually was doing something. So anyway, uh, the key takeaway here was is that I had to, uh, use an application to add a list. I, it, it was just most unintuitive. So anyway, I hope this video you find helpful. This is how you take a library, a list library, 
And you just rinse and repeat this multiple times. Now, if you have a very complicated setup where you have, say, I don't know, two or more lists together, and you have lookup lists between the two of them, the best practice for you would be to take a diagram and to diagram it all out, what's connected to what, because what you need to do and make sure is that you put these lists or bring these lists over in this new environment in a reverse order. So ultimately you wanna take a list that's not linked to anything else and import them. And, or it's not looking up to another list. The problem is if you import a list that's looking up to another list that doesn't exist, you're gonna have all kinds of problems. So you need to start from the reverse order and work your way back. So again, all of the lists that don't have lookups to other lists, put those in first. And then when you got those in place, then put the other lists that are looking up to that other list that you just installed. Now you should be able to install it without any issues. So in any event, um, hope this answers a lot of the questions. We'll see you in the next video. Please leave a comment in the description below and click the like. That way we can increase the algorithm for this type of content. And we hope to see you in the next video. Thanks. Have a great day.